The flexible modeling extension in Creo Parametric adds direct modeling capability to Creo Parametric's parametric modeler. As you're probably aware, Creo Parametric is a feature-based parametric modeler. What that means is that you create parts by starting off with one feature and progressively adding features to it. And those features have dimensions and parameters and parent-child relationships. So you change the features by modifying those dimensions and parameters. And changes to one feature will propagate to other features in your model. Direct modeling is different. Direct modeling is geometry-based and not feature-based. And when you want to modify a model, you're doing it independent of its history or its design intent. In other words, we don't have these parent-child relationships that determine how one thing changes something else. And if you want to make modifications to the model, you can do it without modifying the dimensions. You can freely change the geometry by feel. And it works on both native Creo parametric models with features and also on imported geometry. And the functionality in the flexible modeling extension is closely related to Creo Direct, which allows you to create new parts and assemblies using the direct modeling paradigm. And the great thing about the flexible modeling extension is that it's available in every license of Creo Parametric. And so there are three main areas where I find it very convenient to use. First off, in Creo Direct, you could use it at the beginning of a design when you're just trying to get a concept or ideas into a model. And you just want to create your, your geometry. You don't want to worry about, hey, what are these different dimensions going to be? Or if I'm creating a curve, how it's going to be constrained and all the different parent-child relationships and other parametric information that's required when you're doing modeling in Creo Parametric. Another great use case is imported geometry because you could use import data doctor, but it doesn't have all the, the functionality that you would want for making changes to maybe a step file that you bring in. And the other big use case that I find for direct modeling is after you've already created the parts and you want to make a design change and especially if the part is very complicated it has a lot of different features because if you're getting this model from someone else now you have to make a modification to it you might not be aware of the design intent that the original creator used to make it also sometimes you're trying to make a change to a part and you realize that you don't have the necessary dimensions or features that would allow you to make the change that you want to make. And another situation I've used it is, again, you've got some complex models, got a few hundred features, and you want to make a change to maybe the 10th feature in the model. And by making that change, you end up getting a whole bunch of regeneration failures. And so direct modeling is very convenient at the beginning and the end of the design process. So when you access flexible modeling, uh, there are essentially three main parts uh, of the interface that you're going to use. So you're going to have the ribbon, and the ribbon is broken up into a bunch of different command groups. You have shape surface selection, which allows helps you select geometry that's related to each other that you want to manipulate. You also have search functions like the geometry search tool that will help you grab what you want to make modifications to. There is a group of commands in the transform group that allow you to edit and move this geometry around. Then there's the recognition group, which allows you to recognize patterns, symmetry, and rounds and chamfers, and the edit features, which allow you to control the intersections with uh, features in your model, or excuse me, with geometry in your model. When you are performing different manipulations, you may see the 3D dragger, which allows you to translate and rotate uh, the geometry that you're moving. And just like in other modes of Creo Parametric, when you select something, you're going to get the mini toolbar that's available in Creo Parametric 4.0 and later. And if you hold down the right mouse button, you're going to get a menu that has a number of different commands in it. 
And so there is a general process that you can follow. And this, this is just one process that you have in flexible modeling. And you can start off by selecting an initial surface, a seed surface, and then construct a surface set using the shape selection tools, geometry rules, and the mini toolbar and right mouse button. And then once you have the geometry selected, then you can apply actions to it, like editing rounds or modifying analytic for changing the radius of spheres, cones, cylinders, and so on, uh, offset, remove, mirror, or substitute, and what we'll take a look at in the video here, the move command. We'll take a look at move using the dragger. Uh, in later videos, we'll take a look at move by dimension and move using constraints. So with that, let's go on to the demonstration. So here I have a part open in Creole Parametric. And if you take a look at the model tree, all I have is an import feature. And I want to make changes to this. So first, I will click on the Flexible Modeling tab. And let's say I want this surface to be stretched out uh, and made so that the, that boss is longer. I can select the surface. And from the mini toolbar, we have a move command. And it is move using the dragger. You'll know, also notice that the keyboard shortcut is control T to get to that. And so after selecting the command, you see that the surface is highlighting in orange and I have a 3D dragger and I can just go and grab this and drag it out to the depth that I want. And when I'm happy, I can hit the check mark, which I can also do from middle mouse button. And now that surface is longer. If you take a look at the model tree, I do have a move feature in here that I can use to change that later on. So again, that one very basic, just selected it and moved it over. Now I've got a couple of bosses over here and I want these to be in different locations. And so again, I will select a surface and this time from the mini toolbar, I'm going to use some of the different options in the top row, which allow me to select what's called the boss or bosses. And that's the includes the same geometry as the boss, but I'll also grab any other features like rounds that attach it to the main body of the part. Let's go ahead and use this boss one over here. And again, we are going to, oh yeah, this time I want to actually move this other one along with it. So I'll hold down the control key and let me use the boss command from the shape surface selection. And with that selected, I can also execute the move using dragger command from the uh, uh, ribbon. And here's another thing. Maybe I want to move it an exact value. Right now, the origin collector is active. If I select a surface like this flat surface over here, now it'll allow me, a little hard to see, but I have a dimension here that I can use to enter in a precise distance relative to the selected surface. Maybe I want these moved over exactly a quarter of an inch. And that's good. Let's hit the check mark and I've got that moved. And now let's take an example of, okay, I've got this cut over here. Again, we can select a seed surface and I'm not grabbing the boss. I want to grab the cut. A lot of times I'll use the cuts option to grab the secondary geometry just to make sure that I have it. And then again, we will use the move command and I can drag it over here. And you can see how the intersection is updating along with it. Uh, let's also drag it a little bit down. There we go. When I'm happy with it again, just hit the check mark or the middle mouse button and I've moved it over and down a little bit. And let's take a look at one other example from a different part. And so again, I just have an import feature and I decide that this thing here in the middle, this depression, I want to move over uh, to this side over here. And so just like before, I will start by selecting a seed surface and when I hover over and when I get what I want, yep, that's those are all the different surfaces that I want. But again, a lot of times I'll just use the cuts option to make sure I'm getting the correct secondary geometry. Let me hold the control key to grab the stuff over on the other side. And so I've selected all that geometry. Let's use the move command again. And like what, like before, 
with the origin collector active, if I want to have a an exact value to move it, a dimension available to me, you just select that origin reference and we can drag it out over here. I say, you know what, I want this moved over. Let's move it 1.25. That's good. Hit the check mark. And our move feature, move that stuff where we wanted it to be. So that's an introduction to some of the functionality in flexible modeling. Again, we just looked at the move command. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, let me just select something else. I'm gonna go and grab, let me just grab this boss over here. If I go into the move command, one thing I wanna point out is from the drop down list on the dashboard, you could change to move by dimension and move using constraints, which we'll take a look at in another video. So one thing I like is the fact that even though you select the move command, it allows you to change between a couple of the other different options available in here. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.